Well, when your deceased loved one passes away, of course, you take them to a funeral home. and You would either have them cremated, have them prepared for burial, and you know, oftentimes there's a ceremony and there's moments where you're able to, to say goodbye. That's not always the case, though. Sometimes you don't want that ceremony. Sometimes the, the bodies are there and you trust people to do the job that you entrusted them and paid them to do. Not so much the case, though, with the return to nature funeral home in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They, on the other hand, decided stacking 190 bodies amongst the walls, the tables, the chairs, anywhere they could really fit a body. They did it over the course of quite a bit of time, respectively, over COVID. How on earth 190 people even fit into this building is another question when you actually look at the size of it. But how something like this actually takes place is the bigger question. Jennifer Coffendaffer, retired FBI special agent, is with us to discuss this. Yeah, that is the question. How does something like this happen? Is there just that much of a lack of oversight in this industry that something like this was allowed to, to conspire, to transpire over the course of several years? Well, I th think you combine a uh, lack of oversight with the will of many people to make money at any cost mm -hmm. and to see that something like this would work, right? They, they marketed it. They got people to pay them and, and they were able to carry on at least in 190 cases Yeah, and, and make probably quite a bit of money. So uh, if you don't have any moral integrity, uh, unfortunately, people are able to get away with crimes like this. With a crime like this, though, I mean, even if your goal is to let's make the money, why would you not dispose of the bodies? Why would you not uh, cremate them so you could have more room for more bodies, I guess? What would be possibly a motive to keep 190 bodies in a building? Not only, obviously, it's insanely unsanitary, probably uh, quite lethal, honestly, if you go into that building without proper hazmat equipment. Why? Why, why would one have a, an idea, a motive, a reason to do something like this? Well, I think the motive is, is the dollar sign. Yeah. Uh, they would have to pay to have the bodies cremated. They would have to pay to have somebody dig a grave to get a grave site. I guess what you're saying is why didn't they at least take a bulldozer and make a mass grave outside and put them all in? Something. I think they were worried about uh, possibly – somebody noticing that because you would still need your bulldozer or backhoe driver. Um, I guess they could have dug them out, but I see this all combined with number one, greed, mm -hmm. number two, opportunity, and number three, laziness, where it was just easier to throw the bodies in there and hope that they would never get caught, thinking they would never get caught, and not to have any, you know, to have 100% profit on the deal. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get wanting the money, but I mean, to do something like this, are we, are we in talking about some uh, people here? Cause this, there's more than one person involved uh, in this. Uh, we're probably talking about some very severe mental illness here. I would think that would allow someone to do something so gruesome uh, and, and, and interact day in and day out with a, a situation like this in their own business. You, you know, Tony, I always, find it interesting, I think, because normal people like you, uh, just it's so hard to wrap your head around people that are this sick, yeah. right? To be sitting there with a bunch of dead bodies for uh, a long period of time, not a bunch, a hundred plus, yes. almost 200 dead bodies in your place of business. Like a prom. Just, <laughs> the prom of dead people. It's the prom. It's so incomprehensible. Then we say, well, the people must have a mental illness of some kind to be able to do it. But I would say uh, a lot of criminals that that have behavior like this, they're, they're just really um, empathetic and immoral and greedy. Mm -hmm. And I can't attribute it to any sort of uh, mental illness uh, because I think that that's their controlling those factors control their behavior, not a mental issue. Yeah, I guess it really just shows there there is no uh, limit to where greed can take you. 
Yeah, I would agree. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you want more of our interview with our guest, be sure to check out our podcast, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Just search that wherever you download podcasts and press subscribe. Also, you can check out our YouTube channel for the full video version of the interviews as well. Under the same name, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Check it out, subscribe, binge, and enjoy. Thanks for watching.